In one sentence, time and space and gravitation have no separate existence from matter. Physical objects are not in space, but these objects are spatially extended. And this way the concept empty space loses its meaning. We are not floating on the surface of space. We are not swimming through space. We're not like fish or ducks. We're like ice cubes. We are part of space and part of time. We interact with it. We change it by being in it. We relate to it and it relates to us. It's the interaction between forces and particles that causes reality to emerge. It's all about interactions. I'm going to rephrase the uh, way the universe arrived very specifically. Big Bang gives us the universe. The universe gives us the laws of physics. Energy gives us matter, particles, quarks, and electrons. The laws of physics plus particles gives us protons and neutrons. The laws of physics plus protons, neutrons, electrons gives us atoms. The laws of physics plus atoms give us gas clouds. The laws of physics plus gas clouds give us stars. The laws of physics plus stars give us elements. The laws of physics plus elements give us planets. The laws of physics plus elements and planets give us life. The laws of physics are the interactions. Replace every one of those with the word interaction, and you will understand the history of the universe. It started with interactions. It continued by interactions. It continues now by interactions. A growing number of people think that what really matters are not things, but the relations in which those things stand. We may never know the real natures of things, but only how they are related to one another. Now a question arises, what is the reason we can know only the relations among things and not the things themselves? The straightforward answer is the relations is all there is. This is an interview conversation between uh, science writer Amanda Gifter and scientist Donald Hoffman at Atlantic Monthly. April of 2015. Atlantic Monthly is an American magazine. It's probably the best magazine in the, in, in the United States right now, uh, certainly in terms of writing about everything that's going on in weird ways. Um, AG is Amanda Gefter. DH will be Donald Hoffman. This is their conversation. Uh, and it's worth looking at because it's pretty dramatic. As we go about our daily lives, we tend to assume that our perceptions, sight, sounds, textures, tastes, are an accurate portrayal of the real world. Sure, when we stop and think about it, when we find ourselves fooled by a perceptual illusion, we realize with a joke that what we perceive is never the world directly, but rather our brain's best guess at what that world is like, a kind of an internal simulation of an external reality. Still, we back on the fact that our simulation is a reasonably decent one. Not so, says Donald B. Hoffman. Professor of Cognitive Science Hoffman has spent the past three decades studying perception, artificial intelligence, evolutionary game theory in the brain, and his conclusion is a dramatic one. The world presented to us by our perceptions is nothing like reality. The idea of questions about the nature of reality and disentangling the observer from the observed is an endeavor that straddles the boundaries of neuroscience and fundamental physics. The quantum physicists marvel at the strange fact that quantum systems don't seem to be definite object localized in space until we come along to observe them. Experiment after experiment has shown defying common sense that if we assume that the particles that make up ordinary objects have an objective observer independent existence, we get the wrong answers. The central lesson of quantum physics is clear. There are no public objects sitting out there in some pre-existing space. Read that again. There are no public objects sitting out there in some pre existing As physicist John Wheeler put it, useful as it is under ordinary circumstances to say that the world exists out there independent of us, that view can no longer be upheld. Quantum physicists have to grapple with the mystery of how there can be anything but a first-person reality. In short, all roads lead back to the observer. Objective reality is just conscious agents, just points of view. 
the idea that objective objectivity results from the fact that you and I can measure the same topic in exactly the same situation to get the same results, it's very clear from quantum mechanics that that idea has to go. Physics tells us that there are no public physical objects. It doesn't seem like many people in neuroscience and philosophy of mind are thinking about fundamental physics. Has that been a stumbling block for those trying to understand consciousness? It has been. Not only are they ignoring the progress in fundamental physics, they're often explicit about it. They'll say openly that quantum physics is not relevant to the aspects of brain function that are causally involved in consciousness. They are certain that it's got to be classical properties of neural activities which exist in the these are all very classical notions under Newtonian physics where time is absolute and the objects exist absolutely. And then neuroscientists are mystified as to why they don't make progress. They don't avail themselves of the incredible insights and breakthrough that physics has made. Those insights are out there for us to 